Hello Booktube, this is Leo of The Little Book Life and this will be my last video of this year. Next month I will be starting with my reading project for 2021 and which consists of five different projects. I made five separate videos about each of them earlier this month and they are The Five Star Potentials, The Chunkster Classics Quarterly, the African American Literature Project, the Women Writers Reading Clan, and the Fantasy Literature Project. So for the first month, January, I have picked the following books. Because I still have to read them, of course, I will read from the backs of them or the flaps uh, what they are about. Firstly, the five star potential that I plan to read is in the City of Shy Hunters by Tom Spenbauer. I have read two other novels of his, Now is the Hour and I Loved You More, both of which were five star reads, so I have good hopes for this one. On the front flap it says that it is a novel ten years in the making, a haunting and undeniably powerful work Set against the urban landscape of Manhattan in the 1980s, the novel offers a vivid portrait of New York City through the eyes of a winning narrator who comes to the city an innocent and leaves in a blaze of glory as the city ends up destroying the people he loves. The City of Shy Hunters is a work of rare beauty, a postmodern Cinderella story about the city and how it allows us to lose and find ourselves. Mm -hmm. Sounds rather dramatic. Then the Chunkster classic that I will be reading during the first three months of the year will be Lost Illusions by Honoré de Balzac. Some 30 years ago I read Father Goriot and Eugénie Grandet and while I don't really remember much, much of them because it, it's, it's really so long ago, I do know that I really like them. Written between 1837 and 1843, so it's uh, during the, the, the start of uh, the writing career of uh, Dickens. Interesting. Lost Illusions reveals perhaps better than any other of Balzac's 92 novels, go oh my 92, the nature and scope of his genius. The story of Lucien Chardon, a young poet from Angoulême, who tries desperately to make a name for himself in Paris, is a brilliantly realistic and boldly satirical portrait of provincial manners and aristocratic life. Hmm. Handsome and ambitious, but naive. Lucien is patronized by the Beau Monde, as represented by Madame de Bargeton and her cousin, the formidable Marquise d'Espard, only to be duped by them. Denied the social rank he thought would be his, Lucien discards his poetic aspirations and turns to hack journalism. His descent into Parisian low life ultimately leads to his own death. Oh my! Okay. Then, for my African-American literature projects, I am going to read In West Mills by Deshaun Charles Winslow. Let the people of West Mills say what they will about Azalea not Santa. They won't keep her from what she loves best. Cheap moonshine, 19th century literature and the company of men. And yet. When motherhood looms, not begins to learn that her freedom has come at a high price, low on money, ostracized from her parents and cut off from her hometown, not turns to her neighbor, otisly loving, in search of some semblance of family and home. Otis Lee is eager to help. A lifelong fixer, Otis Lee is determined to steer his friends and family away from decisions that will cause them heartache and ridicule. But while he is busy trying to fix Knott's life, Otis Lee finds himself powerless to repair the many troubles within his own family, as the long buried secrets of his troubled past begin to come to light. 
spending decades in a rural North Carolina town where a canal acts as the color line in West Mills is a magnificent, big-hearted, small-town story about family, friendship, storytelling, and the redemptive power of love. Well, that sounds really good. Okay, and then my fourth project, the Women Writers Project. My pick for January is So Big by Edna Ferba. Winner of the Pulitzer Prize and widely considered to be Edna Ferber's greatest achievement, So Big is a classic novel of turn-of-the-century Chicago. It is the unforgettable story of Selena Peek de Jong, a gambler's daughter, and her struggles to stay afloat and maintain her dignity and her sanity in the face of marriage, widowhood and single parenthood. Then the fantasy book for January. I actually chose to read The One Kingdom by Sean Russell. Uh, since I have a rather busy reading month ahead, because I planned to read two more novels next to these five, and I had finished the last book that I would be able to finish in December, I began to start The One Kingdom already last week. And it was such a disappointment. I read about 70 pages and then decided to DNF it. In these pages I could tick off all the classical fantasy elements one by one, like the journey, the young man, the mysterious stranger, a sword given to the main character, the pursuit by enemies. It was all there. And next to that I also found its typical male gazy fantasy. And I was like, been there, done that so many times by now. I'm really looking for something more original when it comes to this genre. So I switched to Mordew by Alex Phoebe, which is really original and I am loving it so far, but I have only just begun and I will read it during January. Okay, about the book. A god lies defeated, his corpse hidden in the catacombs beneath Mordew. On the surface, the streets of this sea-battered city are slick with the living mud and the half-formed, short-lived creatures it spawns. Creatures that die and are swept down from the merchant quarter by the brooms of the workers and relentless rains where they rot in the slums. There, a young boy called Nathan Treves lives with his parents, eking out a meager existence by picking treasures from the living mud, until one day his mother, desperate and starving, sells him to the mysterious master of Mordew. The master derives his power from feeding on the corpse of God. But Nathan, despite his fear and low station, has his own strength. And it is greater than the master has ever known. Great enough to destroy everything the master has built. If only Nathan can discover how to use it. So it is that the master begins to scheme against him. And Nathan has to fight his way through the betrayals secrets and vendettas of the city where God was murdered and darkness reigns. Welcome to Mordew. So these are my choices for January. Next to these I am going to buddy read Swimming in the Dark by Thomas Jedrowski with my friend Jesper from the Instagram account Cover Talks. And I hope to squeeze in the mystery novel that Kate Howe recommended to me, The Fleet Street Murders by Charles Finch. If I don't succeed with that, then I will read it in February, because I don't want Kate to have to wait too long to find out if she is successful in her endeavor to lure me into mystery, a genre that I normally don't read. Okay, that was it. That leaves me only with wishing you all a great New Year's Eve which in the Netherlands is, by the way, called Old Year's Eve. And wish you all a very happy new year. Thank you for all your support during the past year. And thank you for watching this video. Bye bye.